Aboriginal visual arts. Well, um, the name is very self-explanatory that it's looking at the visual arts of uh, Aboriginal people here, but it's, um, I, it is primarily concentrating on the east coast of Canada, looking at the Wallistaquay and Passamaquoddy primarily, um, and looking at the traditional crafts they used to do, and also more of a practical sense too, because it's that's something that looking at the cultures, there's there's a lot of bleed over between what we understand as art and craft and things that have much more of a practical manner. For example, paddles, baskets, and I mean, you can even see here in the corner, black ash basketry. It's you know it's a very practical thing, but it can also be taken to a very extraordinary level. So it's the program is concentrating on both providing a foundation in visual arts as we do courses in writing and dealing with things like doing critiques of artwork, compare and contrast, and all such like that, but also uh, to be steeped in learning about the history, the culture, and also getting hands-on experience with a lot of the different crafts. I do think that primarily Aboriginal people uh, would be drawn to the course more, being their heritage and, and whatnot. Um, but it's there's quite a mixed crowd, and uh, I'm a good example of that. I'm, I'm not an Aboriginal individual, uh, but I'm here and I'm, I'm learning so much. And it's... A lot of it has to do with the way that the course is taught, but also with the lessons that are being taught. It's a lot of it can be, you can apply to your own life. And that's something that we all, we all go through the journey of life and a lot of the same struggles, regardless of which culture or heritage we have. It's uh, very multifaceted for me. I didn't even know about the program at first, to be honest. I, I do wood carving. I enjoy traditional wood carving, so I do carvings without the use of power tools. Uh, so that's a lot of mallet and chisels and knife work and many, many hours and blood, sweat and tears and, and whatnot. But it's a very soul-soothing process for me. Um, so I actually started coming here to the LEAP program in the evening, which is a, uh, it's a not-for-credit program that's offered in some of the courses and it's, uh, LEAP stands for Lifelong Education with an Artistic Purpose. And so that was an evening course that I took on um, some of the mask making that's done here for traditional wood carving. And so I came to do that because I love carving and that's how I found out about the courses. It's the, uh, that one specifically is taught by Dan Robichaud and he's one of the instructors here. So I talked to him quite a lot about it and talked about what to expect from the program, what not, and I molded over for quite a few months and here I am. I'm not here solely for the craft of wood carving as it's, it's not primarily a wood carving course. It is touched upon in the course and you can also, in the second year you have a lot of time for individual exploration, specializing, and really really just concentrating on which craft you want to go forward with. Um, but it, the program in itself and the values that are being taught and the lessons really, they very much coincide with how I want to live my life and how I try to. And that's something that matters very much to me is not just how, what, specific education you receive. It's not necessarily that you get a diploma. It's what have you learned? Because that's what's going to carry you forward. I think it really is quite impressive how it, um, how much is covered, but also the way that it is covered. It's, it's something that it's not only Aboriginal individuals can learn and take away from it's, you know, lessons that are being taught. They, they're being taught in a very, 
in a in a way that you can you can take a lot away from them. You can learn from them, regardless of your background, regardless of how much you may know. Because there's even with some of the Aboriginal students in the classroom, everybody comes from different backgrounds. Everybody comes from different communities. Certain people that they had a childhood where they were actually taught these things by their parents and their grandparents for maybe they learned basket making or beading. And then you have some other individuals that they are aboriginals and they are students here and they're in the same program. But some people have been removed from the culture of their ancestors. And it's, it's very nice that things are being taught in an open way that you don't have to be an expert on anything but still a great deal is, is covered. Primarily, it's for myself, it's, it translates into my craft of traditional wood carving. Um, so with that, I'm, I'm taking the lessons that I'm learning and the methods and whatnot, and I'm able to apply them in my own way to, to my own craft and to, I can take some of the wisdom that's being taught and the life lessons, and also the very the technical skill and practice as well to learn. And I'm able to apply it to some very non-Aboriginal things with my carvings. And it's I'm happy that I'm able to take that knowledge and to go forward with it and hopefully to teach others what I've had the privilege of learning, but also that I'm able to respect the culture and the teachers and the peers and people around me that I'm learning from. And I realize that while I'm not a part of that culture, I can still, I can still pay respect to that while also taking, taking what I do with wood carving into a bit of a different direction so that it's not appropriating, it's not stealing for lack of a better word what's not mine, but still being able to learn and grow. I think that um, a lot of the way that, um, that's, that's a really hard question to answer because it's hard to find words for something, something that large and, and complex, but the way that certain topics and subject matter and lessons are handled are, they're handled very differently and more openly than in other manners that I've experienced. Um, this is my first experience with Aboriginal education, if you would use it in that term. Um, and I've, I've been to post-secondary before in a very non-Aboriginal setting and situations like that. And the way that it's approached is, it's, it's hard to explain, but it's it's different. It's more understanding. It's more it's more about the process and having full, carried out, in depth thought about the process. And not everything is necessarily about the finished product. It's not always about the destination. The journey is often more important, mm -hmm. and that's what will that what that's what will help you grow as an individual, not just as an artist, but as an actual person. I think a lot of that is very difficult to, and it's definitely a challenge to actually implement it into a curriculum. Um, because a lot of it does come from, I guess, what would be considered soft skills. So that can be a lot more difficult to actually communicate in a classroom. Um, and it's a very general explanation, but I think one of the biggest things is realizing that everybody's here to learn, even the teachers are here to learn, and everybody comes with their own little tidbits of knowledge. No one person in the world has all knowledge. And, you know, like you hear the expression from the mouths of babes, right? It's sometimes, some things can help put things in perspective, but also it's Everybody has something that they can contribute to the pot of knowledge, if you will. And 
with that also comes the understanding here that you can't just take from the pot of knowledge. You also have to put something back in. You have to contribute. It's very much a continuous circle of learning, if you will. And with that understanding and being encouraged and communicated, it's I've seen a lot more personal growth and development here. Even though people are at different levels of education, different levels of understanding, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people here are specializing in different mediums. Like I'm doing wood carving, but somebody else may very well do basketry. And those are so completely different. But to still be able to be in the same program and to develop those skills together and to still to come together and to be able to all learn the same lessons while learning different technical skills, it's, it's very interesting to see how that plays out and it's really been a blessing so far. And I should clarify that even though there's the different technical skills being learned, um, everybody does still learn the basis of each skill that is taught here. It's just um, going forward after that foundation, which you want to specialize in, that you go further with that. How do I see this program? Um, even since I've been here, I've, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of success with it. I've seen how it's applicable to many different people. I would argue everybody from every culture is able to come here and they're able to learn very valuable lessons and technical skills that they can go forward with. Um, but I, I can see the program growing a lot. I can see more being introduced into the program and that's something I look forward to. Um, and also for just the broader question of Aboriginal education in 10 years time, going back to my own childhood and being an adolescent and going through all the different school systems and post-secondary and whatnot, I think that I think that the various different curriculums could greatly benefit from having more of this approach integrated into them. I think that would nurture a lot more understanding, but also personal development and maturity that would come from that. I can see that in order for that to happen, there would need to the most logical first conclusion is there's a little bit of a space re restriction here, I guess. If um, things were to expand to a larger degree, there would have to be more accessible space that could be used. Um, that's the first and foremost, I believe.